Hello. Um, I know so a couple of you have been interested in kind of the progress of my cold cellar project that I'm working on. So I decided I'd take a video today and kind of sum things up as they stand. So we're looking at the hole here that I had dug. Um, this has been here for probably about three weeks now. Um, as you can see, it's got uh, walls that are pretty much rock. I'm standing on fractured, uh, fractured shale, which is a very stable, uh, but unfortunately very difficult uh, substrate to dig through. Uh, it took about uh, uh, five or six hours to get this hole made. Actually, right below the bottom of the hole is bedrock, which is not fractured. It's uh, some kind of granite. Um, fortunately, we only had to go through about five or six inches of that. Uh, and the bottom of the hole is about a foot of um, uh, three-quarter minus, or no, I'm sorry, that's just three-quarter open. Um, and then I've got, uh, you can see some French drain piping in there. I've got some perforated pipe in there, let, looped all the way around to, uh, to go into the corner sump, which is over here. Corner sump is about three feet, three and a half feet deeper than the rest of the pit. Um, right now I just have an electric sump in there temporarily to empty things out. We've been getting some unseasonably new, uh, recent rain. Uh, but uh, eventually there'll be both an electric sump in here as well as a siphon based sumping system so I shouldn't have to rely on electricity to empty this hole. Uh, I'll fill in the rest of that gravel and there'll be this, uh, this white um, uh, 55 gallon drum will be in there to act as a sump base. Uh, the bottom of that's going to be closed, the top of it will be perforated to let the water in. L longer story there, maybe I'll make a video on that later. Um, so the top of the container is going to come right to this, uh, this, pl this line here, uh, horizontal line, uh, and then there's going to be on top of it, so uh, the, the, the container will go into the hole, and then on top of it, uh, that container way up there by the shop is going to go directly on top and get bolted into position. I have four container um, adapters which are designed to hold containers together specifically, so those, one of those will go in each corner. Uh, and then once that is all together, um, I'll build a roof out from the edge of the garage, um, continuing out over the over both containers uh, with the drip line uh, essentially where the other roof kind of ends right now. So I'll just extend that that three-sided um, uh, lean-to uh, lean shelter area all the way across the width of the back of the garage. That'll keep the water from coming in pretty well, I think, and also give some uh, shelter from sunlight. Um, so uh, let's take a look at the container. It's, I've, I've, hold it on, I've held off on doing this video until now because there really hasn't been much to show uh, until now with getting the container ready. But um, the container recently has seen a coat of tar or rubberized roofing material that I used. Or actually, that's not roofing material. It's actually tar for sealing basements. So the container was already painted um, and uh, I put this extra layer on to keep the moisture away from the paint. Um, and uh, so that was the prep work on the exterior. Now these rails along the bottom I had welded on. Uh, the rails are there to hold um, these bridge sections. I bought a bridge from the county um, some, I guess almost a year ago now exactly. Um, these are 16 by 6 um, and uh, oh, by, uh, uh, I don't even know how long they were, uh, 25 feet I think. Um, so anyway, I've cut these to length so that they will go, the edge of them will go directly on these little shelves here, and then they will stand upright uh, against the walls, uh, the outer walls of the container on all four sides. I'll strap them at the top uh, with either cable or just a ratchet strap. There shouldn't be too much pressure pulling them away. Um, their job is to keep the sides of the hole from touching the sides of the container. So I don't want to have uh, the earth or the gravel that I'm going to use for backfill directly touching the sides of the container, both for pressure on the walls, which isn't that big a deal with the rock that's this, that's this sturdy, uh, but mostly it's to keep uh, moisture away from the walls. The wood will act as an additional layer, a little bit of an air gap in there, so that hopefully we'll, we'll not see any rust in there. Um, so that's going to weigh an awful lot. Um, <laughs> I've got to slide, slide this whole thing forward a bit. I'm going to be wrapping the entire container with the wood and then uh, a crane will come in and pick the whole thing up uh, and swing it over into the hole and then I'll have moved the other container down from where it is currently to just about there in front of the, the lean-to and the crane will pick that up and place it on top. So interior prep um, has been uh, painted the inside with kills, uh, so white oil-based kills which dries really quickly. Um, 
And then uh, here we go with this with the the doorway and frame and the stairs. The stairs I found surplus really cheaply as a, at a junkyard. Uh, I had them sandblasted and uh, powder coated, uh, and then built a frame to support the door because I couldn't just bolt this onto the top. That, that th sheet metal is really thin and and uh, flimsy. So there's a there's a two inch tube steel thick walled uh, frame that is welded. Um, it's, a, uh, it's just a rectangle to match the, the size of the stairway, but it's welded into the corners of the container here on both sides, so it stretches all the way across. Uh, and that supports the weight of the stairs. It also gives a lot of rigidity to the top. I've been walking around there doing stuff. Same down on this end. Um, so the frame, you can see there's some angle iron here welded to the frame. Uh, I wanted to do that so that I didn't have to be so precise in cutting the hole. Um, you know, you never get kind of large cuts like this exactly correct. So I always, I, so I cut just a little bit larger than the, uh, than this part of the frame here. And then this kind of takes up the slack. So I, what I did is I lifted the whole uh, unit in here with the skid steer and kind of pressed it up against the ceiling. Uh, then tack welded it to the frame. But this little piece of angle iron made it so that uh, I didn't have to be so exact. Now on the outside, and I can't show it to you right now, but on the outside I, I just beaded in a bunch of uh, silicone. Um, this is an aluminum diamond plate, um, uh, uh, I guess a roof lid. I've got four stainless hinges back here that come through. I haven't completely fastened them up yet. I've just placed this for, um, uh, I just placed it about an hour ago and got all the holes drilled and everything. So it's almost ready to go. Um, really all I've got to do is lean up the, um, the wood against the outside of the unit, seal these doors up um, with silicone uh, on the inside and the outside, and then put it in the ground. Uh, I'm going to treat the floor, but I'm going to do that after it's in the ground. Um, I, I think there's going to be too much stuff going on inside of here to do it before then. Um, and in any case, it's still a little bit wet from the rains when I had the roof open. So I'm going to put it in the ground and put a dehumidifier in here for a month or so, and then I'll put uh, I'm going to put a coating down on the floor to both weatherproof it as well as um, give a nice a nice reflective coat. That'll probably be gray. All right, so that's it. That's the status. I will probably send another video up when uh, when we're getting ready to put this in the hole. But uh, there it is. Bye.